This is a guide on how to install CM12.1 on the Asus Zenfone 2. Let's get started. I'll have everything in the description. Uh, if I made any mistake on this video, I will correct it in the description. I have the 2GB version of the Zenfone 2, so I will be using an external OTG cable. You can use a micro SD card. For the 64GB version, you can just use your internal storage. For the OTG cable, you will obviously need a USD flash drive. So you have to format the flash drive as FAT32. Right now, I'm going to create a backup of every file that's on the Zenfone 2. This is highly recommended. If you have pictures on the Zenfone 2, this is the way to store the pictures. So these are all the download link. You have to download every single file. I'll have it on the description below. I recommend getting a really large micro SD card even if you have the 64 gigabyte version so you can keep the internal storage and the external storage separate. If you have the 64 gigabyte version you can still do the whole guide. So uh, the last two files needs to be transferred to a micro SD card or a USB or you can just transfer it to your internal storage. So as you can see I have it, I have the CyanogenMod file and the gaps. You do not need torp on the uh, on your storage I have it just in case now you have to enable USB debugging on your phone these are the instructions to enable USB debugging it's very simple this is the guide that I will be using I will have this link in the description however this is not super accurate so I still recommend watching this video even if you use the website so now we're gonna be downloading ADB drivers so this is what you're gonna get. You have to uh, hit Y on your keyboard and then enter Y again. Now it's gonna download the fastboot and the ADB driver for your phone. Click next and you should be done. Now we're gonna be unlocking the bootloader. I'll have that linked in the description. You have to extract the files. I'm gonna search on my window key. You have to select this file and it will automatically unlock the bootloader for you. Since we have ADB installed, the phone will automatically boot into the bootloader and then automatically unlock its bootloader by using the script. After the bootloader is unlocked, the phone will boot into this inverted color. The, this inverted color indicates that the bootloader has been unlocked. Now we're going to download Torp if you haven't already, create a folder in the desktop and transfer Torp into this folder. Now we have to go back to the bootloader on the phone. We can, buy, we can do that by opening up command prompt on the computer. On the command prompt we can type adb reboot bootloader. This should automatically boot your phone into the bootloader like this. If that doesn't work, you can do it manually by holding the volume up and power. When, it, when the phone vibrates, you can uh, press the volume up button multiple times and you should be at this place. Now we have to put Torp on the phone. You have to hold Ctrl plus Shift and then right click. Select Open Command here. Now we're going to flash the Torp onto the phone. We can do that by typing this. You will have to modify torp.img to torp underscore v20 or v21.img. After you type that in, hit enter. Now you should send the recovery. Do not worry, it might say failed remote permission denied. After that, do not reboot or turn on the phone. Hit a volume down key until you see recovery mode and then press the power button on the phone. This is very important not to boot on the phone after you flash Torp, otherwise you will get an error. Now you should boot into Torp. Now we're gonna create a backup. I'm gonna use an external OTG cable with a USB flash drive. The flash drive is 32 gig. However, you can use your micro SD card or your internal storage. So you have to click a backup and then you have to select your USB OTG. Give it a bit of time and it should detect it. If you're using your micro SD card on the storage, you can select 
micro SD or your internal storage depending on what you're doing. On here, I have everything selected. However, you only need to select system data and boot. But I still recommend selecting everything in case something goes wrong. Now we need to wipe the internal partitions. So since I do have the CyanogenMod and GAPS downloaded on the microSD card, I can pretty much wipe everything except the microSD card. If you are only using your internal storage, this will be different. I will clarify it on the description on what to do if you are only using my, only using internal storage. I believe you have to only do swipe to factory reset, but I might be wrong, so look at the description for more details. After that, you have to select install. I'm going to select external SD since I have the downloaded files on the SD card. Now you should see the two files that you have transferred to your micro SD, which is CM and GAPS. We're going to select add more zip to select CyanogenMod and GAPS. Now you're pretty much done. You have to reboot and you should load into CyanogenMod 12.1. Look at the description for all the details. If I did make any mistake on this video, the description will correct you. So please look at the description. I will have every single link that you will need and other website if you want to use other people's guide on how to do this. Now you have to set up CyanogenMod and you are done. So for the past two days, I've actually been using CyanogenMod. On the fa first boot, gaps might not work or your SIM card might not be detected. To fix that, all you have to do is reboot your phone and you should have everything recognized. Right now, you can actually use this as your daily driver. Uh, I have been noticing some glitches on the camera, but besides that, everything seems to work. If you do use your phone a lot and you ha you need to use it every seconds of the day, I do not recommend staying with CyanogenMod uh, since there is a couple bugs. And But I've been really enjoying CyanogenMod. After you install CyanogenMod, I would recommend one thing. Go to Display and Lights under Settings and then change the LCD density to 360 dpi. This will increase the screen real estate. I'll have a lot more videos on this phone and CyanogenMod, so stay subscribed and if this video did help you, please click the like button. And also check the description for details. That's all, thanks for watching.